Welcome back, and we're on element two. That's the technician exam. We're in sub element six. Now, it looks like we're starting on question 12, but I'm starting at the end to explain the beginning. These are the symbols for electronics. They're schematic symbols. And if you want to Google schematic symbols or use whatever search engine, dogpile, whatever, and look up schematic symbols, you can see these different types of components. And then you can figure out what they're used for. This is a, a plug for AC. This is a fuse. And our, I drew the fuse a little bit different, but this is a fuse. This is a switch. This is a transformer, which is a type of inductor. This is a diode. This is an electrolytic capacitor. Seven is a resistor. Eight is a light emitting diode. Notice the diode and the light emitting diode are very similar, except this one gives off light. Number nine, sort of like number seven, it is a resistor of sorts, but it is a variable resistor because you can use this wiper to vary the amount of resistance, whether it be no resistance or all the resistance. And then number 10 is a diode that's called a Zener diode, Z-E-N-E-R, Zener diode or Zener. I'm not really sure how to say it. Don't remember. But uh, these little guys, I was asked the other day, what do these uh, E's look like that are on their side? That's a, a chassis ground. And you have other types of ground, but uh, hey, you don't have to worry about it on this exam. These are also connections or wires. And so all of these things right here are connected. The diodes connected the capacitor to the resistor and to the potentiometer. Okay, so with that being explained, the end explained before the beginning, let's go to questions one and two. Now, I have given you a uh, drawing, a really nice drawing, of what these components look like. So question one says, what electrical component opposes the flow of current in a DC circuit? The answer is a resistor. Now, if you need a basic electronics course, you can go buy a book on basic electronics, or you could use the web and reliable sources to also learn about electronics. Now, Again, I'm trying to get you not just to memorize the answers, although some of these you really don't have much of a choice but to memorize it, but to know why it is what it is and be able to recognize it and arrive at your own answers regardless of what the question is. So resistors oppose the flow of current in a DC circuit. Also an AC circuit they do too, but that's not the question. Question number two says, what type of component is often used as an adjustable volume control? Now that's in your older radios and it's a potentiometer. Nowadays, uh, most of our rigs use encoders, but let's not get there. The component that is used as an adjustable volume control could be a potentiometer. And you can see that there's a little wiper and that, th that goes from the right side and connects to that resistor and it can be wiped across the total path of resistance to change that value. Let's go to questions three and four. You're gonna see what electrical parameter is controlled by a potentiometer. Well, I just told you that. It is the resistance that is controlled by the potentiometer. And you can see that wiper can go across that resistor. So if we go back and look at the other picture of a resistor, notice that a resistor is the squiggles. The potentiometer also has squiggles, but it also has a wiper. So let's go to questions five and six now. What type of electrical component consists of conductive surfaces separated by an insulator? In the previous video, I talked about the Leyden jar and how it was a glass jar. That's your insulator. And it had foil on the outside. And my physics teacher had water in the, in the middle or in the jar itself. And then he had a rod, a metal rod that went down into the water. And he charged it. And then if you touched both surfaces, you got a little shock. Well, that's a crude capacitor. 
if you look at the symbols for capacitor, they also look like two conductive surfaces separated by an insulator, which is, in this case, looks like air. Now, that's not exactly what's in capacitors. That's a whole other class altogether. The component that has conductive surfaces separated by an insulator is a capacitor. Question six, what type of electrical component stores energy in a magnetic field? In that previous video, I talked about taking wire, wrapping a whole bunch of wire around a nail or a bolt and hooking it to electricity, and it becomes an electromagnet. Those are called inductors. And you can see over here, these are three types of inductors you may run into. Now, the one to the very far right is actually a transformer, which is two inductors that have some mutual inductance. Again, class for another day. Let's go to questions seven and eight. What electrical component is typically constructed as a coil of wire? Even if you look at the symbol of an inductor, it sort of looks like a wire that has been coiled up. That is the inductor. Even a transformer is coils of wire around some laminates of iron. Or in some cases a toroid, but class for another day. Question number eight. What is the function of an, an it says an SPDT, I would have said a SPDT because single pole dual throw switch. What is the function of a single pole dual throw switch? I drew you a nice little picture here of a single pole dual throw switch. You can see that there's one pole, that's connection C. And there's two ways to throw that switch, and you might have a load on A and a load on B, or an LED, and you can switch between the two. So your answer is the function of the SPDT switch is a single circuit that is switched between one of two other circuits. So if you can remember what the SPDT switch schematic looks like, the schematic symbol, then you should be able to answer that question quite easily. Let's go to questions nine and ten. Now this is where this is where my my fuse looked a little bit different, and I should have looked at the picture beforehand. But I think this is one way you can draw it. The other way is the way that the uh, exam has it. But what electrical component is used to protect? other circuit components from current overloads? Your answer is fuse. And fuses are everywhere. Think of the fuse box in your vehicle. If you plug too much of a load into your cigarette outlet um, or your external 12 volt port, then you will blow a fuse. Most likely it's a 10 amp fuse. And there's fuses of all types and shapes. And that's why we use schematic symbols to, to represent these, because then you don't have to think of, hey, you know, I have to have a thousand different pictures of a fuse. We have one picture. Substitute the type that you need. All right, class for another day. Question number 10. Which of the following battery chemistries is rechargeable? Now, you don't need to know this, but I did draw one type of battery right here. And um, all of these choices are correct for rechargeable. You have nickel metal hydride. That's sort of an older technology that uh, has been so, sort of replaced here lately. Uh, lithium ion and LIFEPO batteries, uh, they're two different technologies, but lithium ion, you see those in your power tools that are rechargeable these days these days. Lead acid, still used in most vehicles. Lead acid, sealed lead acid, those are rechargeable batteries. All of these choices are correct. Those are all rechargeable. All right, question number 11 has my face on it. Hello. Which of the following battery chemistries is not rechargeable? That is a carbon zinc battery. Those are the cheapest of the cheap, carbon zinc. And if you want to go down the rabbit hole of why they're not rechargeable, 
there is a article there is an article that I did find that said that uh, there was somebody who had figured out a, a way to recharge carbon zinc um, but it was not very efficient so at any rate the answer for your test is carbon zinc they're one-time use and your alkaline batteries that you buy your normal double-a batteries triple-a batteries uh, coin cell batteries usually those are not rechargeable they're one-time use and then you toss them out all right that's question number 11 and now we go to the one that we started with at the beginning now you know why i gave you all those pictures so you can see that their fuse is drawn a little bit different. It looks sort of like a glass tube fuse. You have a switch. This is what the question is asking is what type of switch is represented by component three in figure T2. Well, if you remember in the switch that I showed you earlier, you have one pole and one throw. So this is a single pole single throw switch it's used to complete this circuit of alternating current through the fuse through the switch through the primary of a transformer out the secondary of the transformer it is turned into a dc through this rectifier diode stored that charge in the capacitor so that it can light an led which tells you that the power supply is on and then this right here can control your output voltage and current so the Zener diode is used as a very crude uh, voltage regulator I said uh damn because I couldn't remember voltage regulator alrighty so you have muddled through the alpha section of six man we're getting real close here still have a long ways to go but i hope this has been helpful and entertaining and i hope my pictures have helped you as well we will see you on the next section i'm rob w on rcp please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and send some super chats to support all this work that i get to do and i enjoy doing it but hey support me so i can do some more all right thanks so much in 73